This begins a series of practice equations over the patterns of change of combination, decomposition, single replacement, and then a distributive practice objective on balancing equations. We're looking at a practice test C under chemical reactions, getting ready to take our assessment, our celebration of learning plan four, this week Friday. In objective five, the tools that I would recommend to have out, we're going to be writing formulas. We'll be needing to look up charges and some polyatomic ions. So please make sure that you have in front of you your periodic table and polyatomic chart. The other tool page is the combination helpful hints. These are a series of hints that allow us to kind of put together in terms of a combination pattern how certain ingredients combine to form a single product. So combination helpful hint along with our periodic table and let's begin. Our directions are asking us to write a complete balanced equation for the following combination reactions. Please keep in mind when we combine what makes the combination unique, it's the only pattern that produces a single product. Many things combine to form one product. So on the right side of our arrow, we know that we are forming one ingredient, one substance. In our first of the five questions, it says potassium metal reacting with iodine crystals. Elemental potassium is just written by its symbol K. However, elemental iodine is written as a molecule I2. When we begin the left side of our equation, potassium metal with iodine crystals. Reminding you that the states of matter, those little solid, aqueous, heat, all of those little extra adjectives that go into our chemical sentence will not be scored on these particular objectives. So the beginning K plus I2 shows us elemental potassium reacting with elemental iodine. Now let's consider what helpful hint is going to help me predict the product. We need to classify what kinds of elements, element plus element. With those two particular patterns, I know it will be helpful hint one or helpful hint two. Both of these helpful hints deal with element plus element. What kind of element will lead us in determining how to combine them together? When a metal combines with a nonmetal, we consider their charges to figure out the product. Hook by charges when a metal hooks to a nonmetal. We realize potassium, of course, is a metal. It lives to the left of the periodic table. Iodine is a nonmetal. When they hook, they hook by charge. Potassium will carry a plus one. Iodide will carry a minus one. So when they hook by charge, we form a compound known as potassium iodide. Here the I-D-E ending. Potassium with its plus one. Iodide with its minus one. Potassium iodide is K-I. Helpful hint number one tells us when a metal hooks to a nonmetal, it will do so by charges. Then we worry about balancing. I see that the number of iodine to the left compared to the right needs to be doubled. That makes me back up and repair the potassiums, a 2 to 1 to 2 mole ratio as we balance our equations. We'll read number two. Solid copper two oxide reacting with water. Copper two oxide is a compound reacting with water. That tells me as I begin deciding how to combine those, number three and number four deal with elemental oxides and water. Elemental oxides and water bring me down to pattern three or four. Now to choose between helpful hint three and four, I have to decide is the element a nonmetal 
or a metal oxide. Let's reread. Copper two oxide. We clearly see copper is a metal. Copper lives right in the heartland of I don't know your charge by where you live. That's why I'm hearing the Roman numeral two. Oxide is a minus two when it forms its element when it forms its compounds. We begin C U O the formula for copper two oxide. We also make a note that this is indeed a metal oxide compound. When it combines with water, helpful hint number four is the tool that we'll pull out. Helpful hint four says when a metal oxide combines with water, it makes a base. Start with the metal, consider its charge, and the last name will be hydroxide. The polyatomic ion hydroxide, OH negative, the last name for a base. Remember, we've learned that acids start with H and bases end with OH, two very important chemical families in chemistry. The metal that we're going to form is copper two. And we said the last name has to be the base, the hydroxide polyatomic ion. The product we're forming, copper, who is carrying a plus two, hydroxide, who's a polyatomic of a minus one, and I crisscross, CuOH taken twice. We get our skeleton, and then we consider balancing. One copper, two H's, and two O's balances this equation with coefficients of one. Number three tells us gaseous diphosphorus pentoxide reacts with water. This is an elemental oxide. It is a compound reacting with water. Again, this brings me down to combo hint three or four. Elemental oxides with water. Elemental oxides with water. To determine if it forms an acid or a base, we decide what kind of element we have. Non-metal oxides in water make an acid. Metal oxides in water make a base. When we go back and find diphosphorus pentoxide, we clearly see phosphorus and oxygen are both non-metals. We have a non-metal oxide reminding us helpful hint number three. Diphosphorus pentaoxide reacting with water. Our hint is said, when I think about how to do this, start with the H's, you end with the O's, in this example, phosphorus will go in the middle, and we treat it as an addition problem. The last thing that we'll do is reduce the subscripts, if possible. Let's take a peek. Start with the H's, end with the O's, and I get a formula H something, P something, O something. I didn't need to separate that that far. I just need room for subscripts. I see that there's two H's on the left. There's two P's on the left. And there's a total of six O's, H2P2O6. Remember, the last hint, reduce the subscripts if you can. And here we indeed can. A two to two to six needs to be reduced. And what that turns into is a one to one to three. HPO3, the lowest subscript ratio. Let me write that neater. H3, oh, I'm sorry. So much for neatness, please forgive. HPO3. To keep it balanced, we place the coefficient of a 2 all out front. How's that for neat, my friends? P2O5 and water combine to make two units of HPO3. The yellow powder of sulfur reacts with oxygen from the air. It's forming a yellow powder of disulfur pentaoxide. We have an element plus an element. 
the elemental form of sulfur combining with the elemental form of oxygen. Element plus element, am I looking at helpful hint one or helpful hint two? Helpful hint two describes when two non-metals hook together, it's very difficult to predict the product. And unless you're running the experiment, it's incredibly difficult. At our level, we will be told the problem. By listening to the prefixes, we can deduce the product. Disulfur, penta oxide. Helpful hint two describes when a nonmetal combines with a nonmetal. Listen to the prefixes. What's left to do is to balance. And when we balance, I'm noticing odd number of oxygens on the right and an even number on the left. The old trick of double the odd number and things will fall into place. Doubling the product gives me four sulfurs and a total of five times two or ten oxygens. A four, five, two balances that equation. One more in our combination pattern. Nickel metal reacts with oxygen gas, forming a nickel two product. An element plus an element. That takes me to either helpful hint one or helpful hint two. And to determine is it one or number two, we decide what kinds of elements are combining. Clearly we see nickel is a metal. Nickel gives us the metal and since we don't know its charge by where it lives, it's telling us in the product. When nickel, which is a metal, combines with elemental oxygen, it forms a nickel two product. Friends, the reason that's there, you wouldn't know what charge to use for nickel. We have to be told using that Roman numeral. When nickel forms a compound, it's going to use a plus two. When oxide forms a compound, it's going to use a minus two. Remember, elemental oxygen, O2, but in a compound, NiO. Helpful hint number one, when a metal hooks to a nonmetal, consider charges. Then we back up and balance. Fixing the oxygens and repairing the nickels. A two to one to two ratio. This ends the helpful hint journey on combinations, preparing us for the five we'll see on test day.